Hey everyone, the name is Rector and today I want to answer a question. The question is, are INFJs ambiverts? And today I want to talk about really just introverted extroverts because it's a thing. And today we'll find out what that is. Now, okay, let's think about it like this. There are lots of introverts in the world that primarily base themselves on their own subjective worldview and values and opinions and primarily take an interest in their own experiences and individuality. There's also a large group of people out there that are extroverts, meaning they like going out, they are more focused on objective experience, on things to do and on keeping busy and on influencing the world around them somehow. Now, the introverted judging type, and that includes INFJ, ISTJ, ISFJ, or INTJ, they are people that primarily base their worldview on the subject, on their own interests and on their own values or their own goals. But because they are judging types, because they have either extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking as their secondary function, they go out into and try to influence the world, trying to shape it in accordance with their own ideas and their own vision. So as an INFJ, you are far more inclined to feel like an ambivert than as an introvert in the true sense of the word. You're gonna know that yes, I tend to be quite focused on myself and I can be quite self-absorbed, but at the same time, I try to have a positive impact on the world around me. In group situations, I tend to adjust to other people's needs and feelings. I take on whatever role is necessary for other people. If people need me to be talkative or engaging, I will try to be that way for them. If the world needs me to act or go out or do something in order to realize my vision, I will do so. Generally, INFJs, they are neither on the bottom pile of introversion or the top pile of extroversion. Most of the time, they're quite even. They're quite in the middle. They are a little bit uh, introverted, a little bit extroverted. So they don't take a true strong position on the scale. That also means that they can be talkative, but they rarely over-talk. They can be quiet, but they rarely... Uh, super quiet. That means they will put in some things, but they will have more of a give and take. Their focus is generally on balance and on conservation and preservation. They can be cautiously extroverted, meaning they go out and they enjoy adventure, but adventure that is planned and organized and uh, prepared in advance. That means they pack, they f think about what they need, they go about it in a careful way, they see can I afford it, how will I get there, what route will I take, and so in many ways they are like uh, methodical organized extroverts in a sense. They uh, are outgoing in the sense that yeah they do get stuff done and they do go out into the world around them to get stuff done. Uh, but they spend a lot of time preparing and planning and working over it to make sure it works out perfectly. In group situations, the INFJ tends to take on the mother or father role of the group. That means they tend to be the organizers, the hosts, the people that make sure everyone comes together, that everyone can talk and everyone can have a word in. They make sure that everyone is taken care of, that everyone's needs are met, that everyone is happy. And so their focus is generally on other people, which is an extroverted thing. But most of the time, they find it a lot easier to engage people based on similar interests. That means they tend to approach groups and people that are aligned with their visions and goals. So uh, key common interests is a key uh, thing here for the INFJ. And if INFJ doesn't have that, they will feel very quickly drained by the conversation and by the relationship. And so they will try to pull out of it. INFJs can be compared to the extroverted perceiving types because you have on one end you have the introverted extroverts and on the other end we have the extroverted introverts. Now on the extroverted introverted side uh, we have ENFP, ENTP, ESTP or ESFP personality types. That means these are people that enjoy hanging out with other people and that focus a lot on objective experience and on what they do and what's happening around them and in their own life rather than their own personal thoughts or feelings. But these types tend to constantly have to relate the world around them to their own needs and their own individuality and their own sense of freedom. They can't deal with being in a group where they can't express themselves or be themselves. 
they find it difficult or annoying to uh, be in a group with people that don't have similar interests or hobbies to them. They need, <laughs> and here, uh, kind of an interesting thing comes up. They can kind of be both very introverted and very extroverted at the same time. Often when you're an ENFP, it's like you go into a conversation and you start talking and you feel really excited and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm done. My battery is gone. I'm tired. I'm, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to go by myself and uh, just be by myself. So while INFJs are ambiverts, I mean relatively stable on introversion and extroversion, like uh, need some social interaction but also need some time alone uh, and have that kind of balance, the ENFPs, they tend to be kind of omniverted, which means they uh, are both introverted and extroverted at the same time, meaning they uh, go through like radical experiences of being very outgoing and very adventurous, and very much about getting new information. And then after a while, they are very introverted, meaning they need a lot of time to process what they learned, what they experienced, what happened to them, and what it means to their identity and who they are and what they want in life. So ENFPs, they really go through that, those kind of tugs of up and down or high and low for introversion and extroversion, while an INFJ tends to, uh, more or less, while they can have some switches, you know, uh, tend to have more even switches, more even waves rather than big or low waves. So as an INFJ, it's important to uh, try to keep that balance often because if you go out of it, it's often associated with being unhealthy. Too much extroversion or too much focus on other people's needs leads to um, truly like negative feelings, anxiety, stress. Uh, too much time alone also leads to a sense of meaninglessness and uh, loss of self and not really knowing what you're doing. So INFJs, they need to have some kind of goal in the world around them. They cannot just be purely locked in their own heads. They need to, at some point, try to influence other people with their work and with what they think about. They need to express themselves in some form or in some form or manner. So, as an INFJ, that's something to work on. How can I make sure that this, these waves stay balanced and that I don't uh, alienate myself from other people too much by going too far into introverted intuition or down the rabbit hole? And what can I do as an INFJ to make sure that I don't push myself too far in the name of my vision so that I don't exhaust myself uh, constantly thinking I have to be so on or so active or so engaging for the sake of other people or for the sake of my goals. Recognize also kind of warning signs when you start the pushing these things too far and also recognize kind of which archetype the INFJ falls in. As an introverted extrovert, you are a protector archetype. That means your focus tends to be constantly on kind of protecting uh, the vision or the goal that you have in your head. A lot of time it's like you see what the world needs to go towards. You see what everyone needs to do to be happy. You have this idea of predestination towards a good grand purpose. But you know that uh, you have to act very carefully, you have to uh, be very hands-on in order to make sure that this vision comes to pass. You have to take proper precautions, you have to prepare in advance, you have to uh, reflect on all possible angles. So to make sure that your vision is not uh, lost and that you're not overcome by chaos. In this way, as an INFJ, you can be at times a bit unconsciously controlling. That means at times uh, you're so focused on how you influence other people. You're so focused on what you say and how you say things that you become too composed. You lose your individuality, your sense of freedom. You become more like a, a slave to your own vision than a free person uh, acting on a higher ideal. So in that sense, if you become too composed or if you become too controlling, uh, you can always become compulsive or obsessive in your behavior. And I made a video just earlier, I can really recommend watching it on INFJ, on obsessiveness and how that works and what that can do for you. 
Anyways, that was uh, why INFJs are ambivert and what that means for an INFJ to be ambiverted. If you relate to this video, please check the uh, link uh, to my other videos on INFJs. And of course, I hope to have, I hope that you have a really nice day. Ciao.